people in the kind of a leadership role for for CLG, but it's actually uh, uh, Finesse these days who is uh, leading them. So just to be to be clear there, of course. And oh, we're gonna see the Cloud Nine. When you look at the lineup, it's 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 everyone's so familiar with these characters. Everybody knows Skadoodle. He's such a such a good AWP player. Shroud, everyone knows Shroud. Complete mad fragging machine. Really good mechanics, and that's where he really stands out. And uh, well, there's not enough time to go through everybody here. We do have the pistol run kicking off between CLG and Cloud Nine. And so we'll have to see whether or not we get a fast or slow round here. It's looking like a slow push coming in. That's a... Pr oh, wow, that didn't do much damage at all. But uh, relatively slow opening here from Cloud9. Three people towards B here for CLG. And two players in the pit, so I kind of like this from CLG, actually. Very nice uh, potential defense on A um, as well to work with. Cloud9 trying to get their way up this. You know, slowly the nades are going backwards and forwards, but the early damage battles starting to be uh, a little bit ahead here are Cloud9. And indeed, there we go. Freakazoid gets the, the first frag onto Tarek. Not quite an entry as they're not planning to actually go in towards the B site just yet, but that could be in the future as now CLG are in a 2 2 situation on the bomb sites. Yeah, and CLG almost have to make take a risk here. Either push out Banana now and gain the info or just stack and they're stacking B. This is a good decision by CLG even though it's the wrong decision right now. I guess it's going to be an easier retake into A as well. Yeah, which exactly. is, is going to help them. Ooh, all the players coming in and this is such a sick angle for Cutler with that USP but he only gets a single kill. Looked like he easily could have picked up a second one there had he been just a little bit more fortunate with some of those bullets. But it's Finesse who picks one up through the smoke on the Sean Gares. That is going to even the situation here and the bomb does get planted by Cloud9 in the nick of time. And nothing has to dart back here towards the hay wagon as he goes down quite low on the health. And Shroud and Skadoodle in better positions than nothing at the moment. Nothing uh, about to be towards balcony as well. So this could get interesting for CLG. Great kills coming in onto the bomb site. Just down to nothing. He goes for the peak, but he's going to be completely shut out. 7 HP, and they can easily take him down here as the defuse is coming in. I think there should be more than enough time as well. Somehow nothing's not dead, which I cannot understand. He's been sitting there on so, such little health. How does nothing even survive there? I have no idea. Yeah, what a strange pistol on Cloud9 with a great opening, getting that entry frag and banana then. Falling back towards A when CLG stacked the B bomb site, you would think that Cloud9 oh. would win that round for sure, but they didn't. And we see five SMGs. This is this is is this not? Oh wow, this is so weird because I think I mean usually you would expect them to just try to buy rifles because the bomb went down, so maybe they would ex they would expect a fast AK round in the round after this one. So you want to be ready for that. And MP7s is not necessarily the best response. But actually, Cloud9 gonna force up. They they get the AK on Skadoodle. He hasn't even got any armor, so he's not dropped it to a player with armor, which you would expect either. So I'm, I'm I don't know what's going on, uh, Fred. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I, I think this is actually the meta is shifting towards you actually going for the Tech Nine nade mm. by when you get the plant instead of going for the full eco to the AK round. So it might be a, like them just responding to that. I, I guess they just want to get the Tech Nine players in ahead on the rush and just allow Skadoodle to. The idea is that he doesn't get hit here, obviously, as they make a choice that he doesn't have any armor. So, and he's even got a flash where he can go for the longer range pop flashes for his teammates up mid if he wanted. Um, but that's a really interesting choice. It's, as you say, it's a, it's a, things are starting to change here. And I actually really like it, seeing the, the, the pressure game consistently kept up against, uh, against the CTs. Their economy, economy being so important and all, and all on map like this. And just going to be a full on A execute. Let's see if they try to use the smokes and just go towards short or if they're going to go towards arch. Only 25 seconds left now. They did this in the previous round as well. They are going very slow and forcing CLG not to have any information until the very last second. But they got 18 seconds to get the bomb down. They need to get the fast entries. If they get anything less than that, oh, the bomb's going to go down straight away. And time is going to be an issue. Not only that, but JDM64, Hazed and Cutler coming in with the MP7 frags. They are going to be making it rain on the A-bomb site with those SMGs. So much bonus money. And Cloud9 didn't get anything from their, uh, their force up there. Yeah. And the m maybe the most important part about that round, CLG only losing one player, which means they are starting to build a bank already at CT on Inferno, which is just so bad for Cloud9. And they picked up the AK, and they still have SMGs in the round to make even more money. It's like the perfect start you could ask for. That's, oh wow, that is, uh, wow, that's gonna hurt. Yeah. Tarek already taking one down with a nade. 
Yeah, and if they can win this round flawlessly, they can build so much bank that they can have like they can have one op, they can have five smokes, they can have five molotovs, they can just delay, 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 and we're gonna probably see the one of those inferno games where every round is decided in the last second. Ooh, Tarek maybe trying to get that extra money with that SMG be quite successful as well. And uh, looks like they are going to slowly but surely push a sandwich in onto the remainder of the Cloud9 lineup. Nothing going to be found over by the uh, bench position going for the pop flash there for the flank, but it was not quick enough. And uh, flawless round indeed. And they even didn't use any smokes in that round. They didn't buy any. They didn't even, because usually you'll see, okay, well, it's a flawless round, but they did use about maybe $900 each on smokes. Well, here, they didn't even throw almost any grenades. Some flashes here and there, but they actually kept the, major the majority of the smokes. So, really economic play. And Cloud9 bringing out the AKs. Maybe they can find an advantage here. And they're still keeping the SMGs. This is a bit ballsy from CLG. They can easily upgrade now, but they just want to play the economic game. And like, even if they lose this, they know they just kind of have enough money to just keep buying. And that'll also reset Cloud9 if they're able to take the following round. And we're going to have the push in. And wow, the MP7 going to pay off against Freakazoid there. They tried to push through the smoke. They get punished. And now they're going to go for a uh, Cloud9 going to go for a fast push up towards A, through middle, through arch. And with those AKs, you could very much expect Cloud9 to get some sick picks going on here. Cutler, he didn't get the info. He had no idea they came in from arch side. Gets caught in the side by Skadoodle. Vanessa uh, only going to trade onto one. So Cloud9 have turned this into a, a round that they can absolutely win. And JDM64 is the weak player on the, B on the B bomb site, but Cloud9 perhaps waiting for a preemptive rotation for an easy two on one with a CT out of position. But Hazed actually has a nice angle at the moment. They, oh, they might oh not expect this. God. That was perfect. However, will he re peek in? The timing. Yeah, that is nuts, actually. And he think it's going to be B. Like you, you can understand that like yeah. it wouldn't make any sense for them to walk back short, which <laughs> they timing. didn't. They just yeah. passed him in like perfect timing. That timing was actually absurd. And had he gone back as well, it was the same situation with Cloud9. They they thought that that was clear because they just actually kind of cleared it. Like it was like kind of one of those spots where it's almost like a a dirty clear of an area where you didn't check everything, but logic highly suggests that there shouldn't be somebody there, just because of the way the timing worked out. And I like that seal just saves. They're really playing on their own economy this game, and I like it. It's a good way to like approach a half, especially C to half, when uh, you have like a huge advantage. You know that the like the only way you're actually going to lose a lot of rounds is that you're going to be forced to eco. So, C L G just keep stacking up money, saving weapons now. Never gonna like let Cloud Nine get into that role where they will force C L G to like one or two ecos. And that's kind of the crazy thing, because we'll have three players spending all of their money. Maybe we'll get some drops here so that you know, proper nades can be bought for, for more players of Cloud9. But they'll be spending so much in this round that CLG... That's kind of the weird thing with the, M the, the SMGs. You'll never want to like lose a round, because like, you just don't, don't want to do that. But it can be advantageous with the, like, the, the money bonus situation. So then now they have, like a, as you said, like they got everything off, all the incendiaries, all the smokes. And uh, if they're able to win this one, they reset Cloud9, and they are money screwed. So what they're playing for at the moment. Oh, we get, oh my god, he actually got a, a kill onto Shroud and the tag oh. as he's jumping across the window. Actually completely absurd there from JD and 64. I don't believe my eyes. I've never seen such a timing on an orb shot. The, <laughs> oh my goodness. That is, this, that is the only reaction you can have from Shroud there. Just the sad smiley face. Oh dear. Yeah, that was so lucky. And if oh CLG wins God. this round, Cloud9 is back to, like, they will reset their economy, so... That is so insane. I am still in absolute awe of that shot. Catching Shroud as he's jumping in, but he's trying to shoot at the player towards the T-Aps. That is... and even hits him as well. And nothing's going to get the entry here, so that will even things up a little bit for Cloud9 as they try to walk in through the smoke now. The Tarek's in the fountain with the fishes, and he's going to pick up a double for his troubles as Sean Gares goes in for the trade. He will pick it up. But at the moment, CLG with a great uh, incendiary as well will be able to delay the bomb plant. It will be tossed over. And goes a nade from Haste. And he's running low, but still an extra incendiary on Cutler. So they can still cause so much trouble just with nades, these CTs, as they pressure in to Skadoodle and Sean Gares. Sean Gares will finally go down, and Skadoodle gets eliminated as well. So that is, there you go. So now Cloud9, they lose the round. 
Didn't get the bomb path. And uh, yeah, this is this is beautiful to see LG. Yeah, and they will be forced to eco, which means LG will probably win this round with a lot of players alive, which means yeah. they will build even more economy. <laughs> I can't <laughs> wait to see the gif of that shot on on front page of Reddit or something, because that it deserves <laughs> it, right? Come on, that was that was beautiful. I don't know, I don't know. That never happens I'd, to me. I've, I've never made a shot like that in my <laughs> life of like playing CS in, in for like 15 years. In Quake it's happened a bunch of times, but it's a faster game with more opportunities like that. But anyway, we will have the eco for Cloud9. CLG 4-1 to one with a booming economy. Uh, after this round especially, they should pick this up for free. And that is, that's, that's how it should go in theory at least. That's what, that's what they're playing for. Look at the position so far back. Yeah, Cloud9 is just looking to get kills this round, probably. Oh, these nades are really strong here by CLG. Gonna toss in the incendiary, and Hayes is going to pick up a double. And uh, Shroud and nothing left uh, left alive uh, now. Shroud can go to the peak. Rattle off a few shots. And this is one of those rounds where it, just, it feels so hopeless. Oh, that is gorgeous there from nothing. I did not expect that. I don't think even nothing expected that second kill, but he's going to pull it off anyway. Tossing over the pop flash, expecting a rotation, wants to catch a player in CT and get some extra damage in. Two Franks and actually is, is really it's good. A, it's a really big deal because in Cloud9's position right now, you just want to deny CLG from building a big bank. Um, getting two kills on an eco is enough to stop that and... It didn't look like they were going to get a single frag and then nothing, just two easy dinks there with the P250. Yeah, I, th that was amazing from nothing. And we'll have to see if Carl Line can use this buy now to to uh, find a way back into this match. They st they've started to accrue some extra money bonus, but they really need to plant to have a decent buy if they lose this one. And we're going to see the deep banana smoke from Hayes there at the start of the round. I'm not sure if that actually found its target. Um, we'll have to see. Sometimes uh, th that can be a tricky smoke sometimes, that one. And this feels like the first real weapon round, because the only weapon round where they both had weapons, the JDM did that like sick option, yeah. so it, it wasn't really f a fair weapon yeah, round. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's one of those, that's like the variance of the game. Sometimes crazy stuff happens, sometimes players go huge. Sometimes that 1% play is the play that makes, makes it through the day. So we have now the push into middle for Cloud9. They're taking some real estate up into the middle of Inferno. And CLG playing the four players on A as, as, uh, as you mentioned earlier before the game started. Very, very common play on Inferno that you can do when the deep smokes go onto Banana. As you got the guys spotting from the car. Oh dear, Finesse going to go in with a quick frag onto Freakazoid. The trade comes in onto him, but Hayes makes the opportunity to get a trade of his own. So now they've got that map, map control. They couldn't get the play going. What, what, what on earth do they do now? Yeah, uh, they should just push Arch and see if they can get an anti frag. It's mm. not going to happen. So two on four now. It's getting worse and worse. Pop flash in from Hayes. Perfect. Completely gets Sean Gares blinded and it's going to be just down to nothing again who has to get some damage in a bomb plant would be really nice but i think that's a bit too much to ask for in this kind of a spot nothing looking to go huge again guess the pre-fire there oh that is actually awesome from nothing he doesn't get rewarded with the kill but that's so smart that's good game sense yeah and i, I really like the shield g is playing reactive they let cloud nine take mid and then they just push two people from both sides just trying to gain info just doing something actively as ct instead of just playing the defensive play and just waiting for them. So, great play there from CLG. And if you're wondering why there's no running sounds for this, the, the, the feet you know, hitting the ground here, it's not because the shoes are off and the carpet's down. It's just a new GoTV bug. It is just another GoTV bug. Re recently introduced in the last week or so. Thank you, thank you Volvo. <laughs> thank you Lord Gaben. Always keeping it interesting. There's always a new GoTV bug here and there. It's something that they get fixed. Uh, at least well we don't have the one but. where they like skate forward. Yeah, that's hilarious though. To be <laughs> honest, the ch the chicken, the moonwalking chickens. It has to be the highlight though. Right. That is the best. I think Cloud9 is doing a timeout eco well, right now. Got some smokes going on this uh, push. To see if they can get some damage in or, or a bomb plant. I think would be the perfect thing for them at the moment. They need, they need some money get these uh, weapons going and really strong defense it looks completely clean at the moment just Sean Gares who's left he's actually made it to CT and I don't think they have any idea where he is so Sean Gares could get some sneaky a couple sneaky kills here with the tech nine 
Now he's gonna be smart about this because the first kill will announce his presence and he, he can't know, know the works. perfect angle. They go to crossfire, oh, the peak comes in, and Tarek from Cubby is gonna take him out. So seven to one, and how many rounds would that be in a row now? Is that four or three? Four in a row. So they they did just receive 2,900 for that loss. So you can see that's really helping their economy. Not getting any bombs down as well. So they need everything they can get. Well, let's see what they try to do now. Triple Molotov. Are we going to see the B execute? It's actually like interesting how many people opt to go for an HE over a Molotov because the Molotov is only $100 more. Yeah, that's it's. It's actually, I hate that difference when I'm on CT. It's like, why is it so cheap for the, for the yeah. Terrace? <laughs> but we're going to actually find a frag there. Good challenge in by COG onto Banana. And that's actually pretty important. Cloud9 have not been able to really take too much control of Banana in the past rounds. COG have been smoking it, been pressuring it. And in this situation, they, they get a the frag on it and then go back to playing really passively. So Cloud9 left with a situation where two players have been picked off early on into the round, thanks to uh, JDM64's AWPing and then that quick uh, flash over and uh, kill from f Finesse. So again, another situation where how do you save it, save uh, save this? How I do you make the play? Just wait on B till like 10 seconds left where the last smoke fades and just try to get a sick shot off or something. It's usually the best bet. Because even if you take Arch, you still haven't got the bomb site, and that's like the only exactly. other weak spot really is, uh, is Arch. And on A, you can the CTs can like spot you and just fall back, yeah. and then they have the info on B. That's not the case. So they are going to go for that uh, B play, as you said, and we have the third player floating towards B for CLG from CT spawn, and the angle is perfect from Tarek. He's really nailed it. it takes the frag on the Freakazoid, does not get traded. Hayes is going to catch Sean Gaz. They didn't have a smoke drop there. They did have smokes, but they chose not to throw them. Yeah, I, I think it's because they were in a 3 versus 5. They felt like, okay, we have like 20 seconds left. We're in a 3 versus 5. We just have to get the kills so fast to be able to get the bomb down. We don't even have time to smoke it off because we need to kill both players on B. The smoke is not going to do anything, so that's probably why they play that that way. And yeah, they have the max bonus now as well, 3400 each time they lose a round. But we can see that ev even that is not really enough for them to have proper bias because it, they aren't getting bomb bombs down. So. For the bomb down, they, they get 4200s at this point, but uh, the, eight, uh, the additional 800 for that, for each player. And Cloud9 is going to go with a fast play, a fast execute onto way at the moment. Sean Gare's going to flash himself in, drop straight onto pit, gets the entry as well. I'm going to try to get himself to switch on the weapon, but it's looking strong right now for uh, Hayes, who's in the bomb site. He's locking it down, that's preventing the plant from coming in. Cloud9 have fallen back into mid to try to claim some rotation kills, and it's going to be a 2 on 3 for the CTs. Hayes still on the bomb site, 2 HP. Tarek is cleaning up whilst they're distracted with his teammate, and oh, Tarek's going to finish them all off. Hayes, you, you got to credit Hayes for just surviving there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Especially when the guy was spamming through the box and he had like 7 HP. I thought he was going to go down there, but him just surviving there bought enough time for Tarek to push out towards the side of the last guy. So another round going for CLG and I think Cloud9 m might have found the weak spot. But it's just like pushing A apps fast, just trying to go for the first A execute. Let's see if they try to do that later when they have more equipment. Because that round, Sean Garrison only had a Galeon. Yeah, and Finesse is going to pick up the first frag. Freak Sword running through the flames for an entry. Very single-minded push there with only blood to try to, to answer for. And it's going to be CLG again with another a really positive trade situation on Banana. I feel like um, with Banana, the, the dynamic we see usually is is uh, favorable, for, of course, for the CTs with all the incendiaries. If you have the, the play to make with it, uh, with the deep smoke incendiary, uh, a, a far incendiary just behind it, then one in the middle, because then you can like clear it out slowly. And you, I guess you can fight back against that if you like push three or four players as the T's with pre-nades. But how, is, that, is that the best way to deal with it? Or what, if Cloud9 want to get Banana early in the round, how do they do it against that? I actually think just going quickly is the best bet, especially when you're in a position like this where you just get keep getting beaten down. I mean, sure, you can just get like completely obliterated, just running into banana into three HGs and going down, but you still create that kind of like random element when you throw the nades, going for those close combat uh, duels. And like, if you're on a on a T on Inferno, random is good because the C just has 
it's such a big advantage, so everything that yeah. makes the game more random is better for the terrorists. And uh, we did get a, <laughs> I don't know how, but Shaud managed to find his way sneakily through onto a bomb plant there, and that did give him that 4200 to start this round with. And even still, we can see, you know, they're spending everything every round because of the, they, they, ha they pretty much have a situation where they have to, and still they can't buy a huge amount of stuff. We haven't seen Skadoodle on the AWP. AWP on the AWP, with an AWP that's as good as Skadoodle on T-side, Inferno is actually a very legit way to find entries, either on mid or banana. So that's something they're really missing at the moment, it feels like. Yeah, Silji is opting to go defensive on B right away now, though. And I think Cloud9 might waste a lot of resources taking banana, even though they don't have to. I'm going to see an Arch Smoke there onto, onto the position of the sniper JDM64. He's going to just. He's already at by library, though, so. Feels like CLG already. Are they moving? Yeah, they're moving four players to A, but the thing is, their player on B is really close to the bomb site. So if they did go for a full out B play, he wouldn't see in time for his teammates to rotate. So that is the weakness in this round, it seems like. But I can't even go for it. They have a player who can kind of spot in, and he's seen nobody, and they are going to go back for B. This is perfect. But CLG, they're slowly starting to move players back to B as well, but they still have a window cloud nine in this situation. Yeah, if they can just smoke off the despawn here. But 25 seconds left. I'm gonna see some close pop flashes here if Sean gets for his teammates. Eliminate any players very, very close on these angles, but they won't find them. We do have a CLG rotating in a very timely fashion, so Cloud9 missing the window, but can they execute their way through? Regardless, Tarek gonna go straight in there with the M4, picks up the frag onto nothing, and to Sean Gares. I don't think they noticed him in time, and now they're just cutting their way through Banana. It's a two on the four right now. CLG all weak and bleeding at this point, but Cloud9 have got Freakazoid and Skadoodle left to hold onto the bomb site. JDM64 is gonna thin out the numbers until it's just Freakazoid left. He is going to go down and the defuse will come in, but that is the most successful round we've seen from Cloud9, I think, in a, in a, in a, for quite a few rounds. And uh, Do you think that that was a read that they made there, that they, they had the guy on Banana spotting and they, they after the deep smokes, they saw no one, so they kind of made that read, that B was weak? Or Yeah, and you, you can see how CLG saved the two smokes for like the last 40 seconds of the round there, which yeah. made, forced Cloud9 to push that like. 22 seconds into B, and uh, it just gets too stressful for them. They can never get in like comfortable after plant position. CLG was just like throwing themselves at them all the time there. And I'm, I'm, I'm just really impressed with the way CLG is. Yeah, they, they, they look pretty solid right now. There's, there's no denying it, um, especially considering the chaos that we had with their game against Elim yesterday. Right now against Cloud9, they look really stable, and uh, their plays that they're making look pretty well thought out, very consistent. So props indeed to CLG, and Cloud9 still looking for answers to break it. They can still get four rounds on the board, be able to pull this one out of the bag, and they have got taken middle away, but it looks like they are ready to fall back quickly. But Tarek's gonna re-smoke Banana. He should fall back, yeah. And fall back indeed. Now, Cloud9 in a spot where, you know, what call do they make here? What would you do? What call would you make? Of course, you, you, I, I you have all the information, so yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's easier for you, but... If I were Cloud9, I would just try to go for the same thing again, the late B push. Even though it's only like 20 seconds left, it's usually the best bet, because the CDs can delay you so much when you try to push A. Yeah, and there's still uh, incendiary on Cutler, a few flashes to play with, as there is 25 seconds left. Last time this happened, the bomb went down before it could get into position, and that was the end of the round. Hayes looking at a very good position. The crossfires are real right now for CLG, but Cloud9 with three kills. Shroud clocking in two, and nothing shutting down the library play of Finesse. It should be the round here for Cloud9. Finally, they found an answer. And Tarek is not really in position to do all that much, except maybe pick up some exits. But Cloud9, I think they'll be smart. And uh, with all the players on such health, they can probably go to the back of pit and avoid getting fragged. But, uh, okay, well, nothing will find Tarek here. And uh, they're all going to move uh, together now to avoid. And th this is exactly what Cloud9 needed. Just pure individual performance there from Shroud getting two really important kills. I mean, they got those four kills in like the matter of like four seconds. Which basically means CLG had four people on A at that time. So, just impressive that Cl Cloud9 can walk into the stack and still win. Yeah, and that's going to definitely make them feel a little bit better. But they, they really need to get everything here because 
you don't want to leave it to chance with the pistol round. You want to have at least a, a, a buffer of a round or two to work with. That's kind of the best possible situation they can have at the moment. And the CT pistol, I always feel like that can be can go wrong very quickly on this map because of the close ranges that the T's can can funnel their all the Glocks through. The, the, you know the choo choo of the Glock train is pretty strong on this map. But uh, Cloud Mine missing mixing things up, going for a fast ba um, banana take now. It should be the trade. Oh, we will have finesse get. Oh, completely dropped there by nothing. Really nice play. Didn't obsess over Tarek who moved towards sandbags. Looked to the other player who was going for the backup. And that's a brilliant play from nothing with the last bullet. Takes off the head of Tarek. And now Cloud9 can get themselves onto that B bomb side. But they have to be careful. There's a quick flank coming in as well from CLG from Banana. Although the numbers advantage is not with the CTs at the moment. Never know, Cutler trying to make his way quickly now. Is he going to? Oh, he's going to go straight through the smoke. He's going to catch the planter. What a play there from Cutler. Hayes coming in. The distraction in the chaos is proving very valuable here for CLG. De oh, JDM64 going to whip that shot, and he's just stuck behind the coils now. But still, we'll get the shot onto Shroud. Nothing. He's going to look both ways. Absolute madness here on the B bomb site, and nothing. Now it's going to get a small moment of calm as the smoke is down and Hayes is stuck behind it, and he's going to take the bomb. And he's going to run that straight away, or will he? That's that's the yeah. question in in uh, the mind of Hayes right now. Will there be a double back? Nothing is not going to fake fake it though. It is a complete 50-50 choice here from Hayes, and he's making the wrong decision. And should be unwinnable for Hayes. Yeah, the plant spot. Nothing can be anywhere. He was so far away, and nothing was gambling for that. So. And after getting the plant, he knew that that was the case. So he can be absolutely anywhere. Graveyard, pits, balcony, even around the back here by behind Arch or something. He can really be anywhere. And he's always on the angle there. And that's it. Easy frag for nothing. What a round from nothing. That was absolutely immense. And you can see he is top fragging by a mile for his team. He's been in a lot of spots where he's been alone and he's had to deliver plays, even if they weren't round winning plays. And he has been picking up the frags. And, you know, that's another round that sh should surely lift the spirits of Cloud9 somewhat. Yeah, especially considering, considering they won two rounds in a row now. Like, if they can get the last round and get the pistol, they might still have an opening back into this game. Yeah, it's, it's so hard when you, <laughs> when you can't force out any ecos. And you're just playing against the buys consistently. And the last round is going to be more of that for Cloud9. Sean Gares looking to uh, help his teammates in with an entry here. Going to try to face both angles. Going in fast here. And there's the entry from the leader, Sean Gares, as uh, Tarek will fall. And there is a player in, in uh, construction for CLG. So if, if, if at least he can hold on to that, the retake potential is really, really there for CLG. He's going to win the duel against Shroud as well and Banana. That's also pretty key. But uh, looks like the, the offense for CLG is waning at the moment towards the, the front of the bomb site. They've only locked down the positions here, but how on earth do they move their way through these grenades? It's, nothing still has a Molotov as well. And with so much time going on the bomb, you would expect this to be pretty easy for Cloud9 to win this one now. And indeed, they will spray down the remainder of CLG and they will take those four rounds. It, ha it looks really hard for Cloud9 all first half, but at least they scraped out a few rounds. That, they have a really solid chance if they win a pistol now, I feel like. Yes, yeah, especially because they gained some momentum there. I mean, they won three rounds in a row, as you can see there on the scoreboard in the end there, so if they win the pistol, the score is probably going to be 11-7 uh, to CLG, so absolute lot chance for Cloud9 to get back into this game. Yeah, and uh, this this map is, is can be so crazy, economically speaking. It can be like really T-sided if the CTs can never afford nades. Um, so it's, it's such a crazy map, but all right, what do we got here for these teams? Full armor here for CLG, the Glock train, can you hear it? The choo choo is coming right now as uh, we will find uh, Cutler going straight up. He's actually trying to provide a bit of distraction. Just going for the frags. Cutler, surely not, but yes, he's going to get both kills up middle. And now Shroud is going to be looking for him. And Cloud9, they don't know what's going on right now because one player, Cutler, is going completely ham. He's still alive. This guy has got rabies or something. He's frothing at the mouth, just going for them. Shroud with great shots, exactly what you expect from him. Such fine mechanics. Oh, Shroud picking up an unbelievable third kill as JDM tries to make something happen on the bomb site. And finally, Shroud will be eliminated and it leaves Freakazoid for the clutch. One on two. Shroud has made it doable for Cloud9, for Freakazoid as he comes in.
Rattling off some shots with the P2000. Doesn't fire, uh, find anything just yet. He's got two nades to work with. That actually can make this work. He can smoke off the pit or something. He has a chance to get close. So go for the smoke towards quad, actually. Trying to bait out the player. He hasn't got a kit. This is really tough right now for Freakazoid. As he tries to find one of these players. They are not giving up though right now. They, the patience is so good. And we've got to play rotate all the way through Boiler onto Apartments. Very well done by CLG. I mean, Shroud, he came out huge in that round. But Cutler's initial play, that was absolutely nuts. Yeah, exactly. Like, What do you do with that? Yeah, if you get two entry frags, I mean, Shroud can get three kills, but it still isn't enough because they're probably going to get the bomb down and have yeah. an advantageous position. So, yeah, the two entry frags by Cutler was maybe match deciding now because I don't think Cloud9 can come back from this if they don't win this round. Well, we'll have to see if they can do something with the scout and Shroud. He had a lot of money from this, that triple kill. The extra 100, 900 bucks definitely helped him out. And, uh, well, he did get a tag on Cutler. He was the guy with the AK. And uh, he could even, Cutler could even consider swapping it out now for someone who's got a lesser weapon. But uh, perhaps they feel like he's earned it from that previous round. And we'll have to see whether or not that's going to make a, an appearance at AK-47 as they go for the push. Now Cloud9. Going for the B push now. I actually would prefer to see them buying Molotovs instead of HEs and Double Flash. Because they can just zone them out there on the B side. Right. NIP are very good at that. They have some amazing B plays with the, the, the quad Molotovs. But we are going to see them use those smokes, use those flashes. They're going to get flashed back a little bit actually. So players getting in position here for Cloud9. They are raining down a lot of fire. And right now Finesse and Cutlass are, and even Hayes getting tagged. They're going to cancel. They are going to cancel, cancel, and that's really smart because Cloud9 had four players on that bomb site. So just, uh, just Shroud, he's got the scout. He's by, uh, by Quad. He's going to get the first shot into Finesse. So at least going to make it a 4-4. Four and, four. and if they can find Cutler quickly, then perhaps it will go well for them. But right now it's looking uh, pretty hard to make their way back in. Because we're going to eliminate the weak player, Cutler. Oh, he's going to get the back of Tarek. That's a great kill from Freakazoid and a weapon claim for nothing. Three on two now for Cloud9. Moving into the retake. Hayes going to be on another frag there. Great shots again from Freakazoid. Takes down JDM. Oh, gets the last one as well. And nothing will get the defuse. And that 4K from Freakazoid and the AK as a reward. That is absolutely beautiful. And Cloud9 keep themselves in with a win on the force. Yeah, I like the decision from CLG to cancel the B push there. It takes a lot of guts to make that decision because you usually you feel so committed when you throw all the nades. But yes, after that, Freakasoy just won that round by just a great individual performance. So that round was really back and forth. Absolutely. Now we're going to see CLG in that position where money's being reset. Going to have to do it with the, do it with the Deeks, double Deeks. And already Skidoo will take a quick frag, and that's really smart, going for that peak on the long range, early timing in the round. And, uh, well, there's always, always going to be a small risk in this game, always a battle of risks and gambles, but this time it will pay off quite well for Skidoo. Definitely a plus EV play, I would say. And, well, we've got a Skidoo with another one towards the Palmas now. So these pick attempts from CLG, not finding much love just yet. Tag will make his way in though. And Stroud has the angle. Good crossfires held by Cloud9. Looking to have a clean round here. JDM64 going to be able to make that not the reality that Cloud9 wanted. Sean Gares again looking at these angles, these long range positions. Very well done. Losing one guy, that's that's okay. Yeah. I really think Celia was looking for at least two or three kills there when they uh, decided to buy two Deagles and two P250s. But Cloud9 managing to build up a small bank at least. CLG is going for the full buy now, of course. Let's see if they go for the fast banana take or if they want to take things more passively here. Yeah, I mean, it's it's um, <laughs> it's this this game is is actually turning into quite a crazy one. If we get if we get Cloud9 actually able to win this one and keep the keep the money going, then this. This game is just gonna be going from just craziness to I don't even know what. So far, it's been quite a ride. Cloud9, it, it, you know, 
it's this story of, of um, almost David of, and Goliath when they had lost so many rounds against the, the T side. That's sorry, on their, CT, on, the, on their T side, sorry. But so it looks like we've got the middle take here for CLG, and so far they are successful. They've pushed Cloud9 back. Cloud9 playing with that four man setup on eight. So they've read the situation well. They've got the uh, spot from Car and Banana to make it safe. And in goes the pop flash play. This is beautiful from Cloud9. Confirm exactly what's going on and uh, see if you can get a quick pick on at the same time. Good risk to take, but Finesse is going to take the frag onto Skadoodle. So now Cloud9 in a bit of a tricky spot because there's still some time here for CLG to play against their rotations. Yeah, and just passive play from CLG after you get down to. Just want to see if Cloud9 is going to make any mistakes. And there we go, we got G JDM64 delivering himself the Freakazoid. Cutler's going to run through the smoke, he's going to run straight into Sean Gez. And uh, that is not what he wants. Finesse knows he needs a desperate solution for desperate times. And it's not going to happen so far. So Cloud9, they lost two players. But in a round like this, knowing that they'll be up against an Eco in the following one, I feel like they are more than happy. And Cloud9 want to pause. And I... Would not assume that at this point, with the momentum that they've, they've been generating, that it's going to be a tactical one. Okay, yeah. so it's a mumble issue. Okay, so it's... Uh, yeah, exactly. It wouldn't make sense for them to take a timeout. Guys, we're winning. Let's time out. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> said said, no, we said nobody ever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I remember, I don't know which team it was back in 1.6 that did that just to like mess with the opponent's head. Really? L like, they were, they were up like 13-0, and they were like, time out. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that, is, that is such a douchebag move. Come yeah. on, oh my god, that's amazing. I actually, I actually respect that, because trying to game your opponents to that level, that's extreme, but I, was, <laughs> I can't uh, Is it like that. risky because you give them a chance to yeah. like discuss what's going wrong? But at the same time, it's there. Yeah. You just, you just want to let, to let them sit in their despair. You want them to like fight with each other, argue. Yeah. It's like, no, it's your fault. You have to time out to stand <laughs> up and like high five each other. It's like, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, it's something that we're seeing used more and more. And, and the coaches, of course, impact the, uh, the game so much at LANs that it's actually cool to see teams using uh, strategical timeouts. We had that at the Face It LAN. Every team had uh, an allotted timeout to use per map that they could use whenever they wanted. And of course, having the coaches watching the matches, and we're seeing coaches from more and more teams now, that is such a good opportunity. But either way, we have Skadoodle with Flick of the Wrist. However, you will not find anything. And this is once again, oh, there you go. The second try is going to work out. But it's, again, it's the same spot. I've got the AWP, you've got pistols. I'm going to take this, this one next door and start the rounds. We get in a bit of trouble here. Oh, he's going to repeat. He's actually going to repeat and get the kill. That's kind of nice. However, they've lost a couple players here. They would not want to lose more than that. When you actually lose three players, that's when you actually are losing money. Or, or not making money, rather, from the round win. Yeah, it's almost at two players because you usually waste some resources with throwing nades and stuff. Yeah, that's actually, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I usually overlook that as well when I'm doing like the, the map. Yeah. And it adds up to a lot of the grenades as well. But yeah, so like, like at, at two, two frags thousands. is like plus minus, plus, plus minus zero. Mm. So, uh, yeah, 12 8 and Cloud9 is on their way back. It feels like this round has been very easy for them on the city half, so CLG has to come up with something new. Okay, so. We have the Tech Nine on Finesse. Actually, having a Tech Nine in a round like this can be kind of a blessing because you get a player that can sacrifice himself to allow you to get a peek. And on a map like this, that is important. Now, that Molotov, I've seen Guardian throw that um, from Navi. Of course, the dedicated author of Navi. Probably, I think he's the best author in the world, personally. I know that there will be people who would disagree, but I think he's amazing. Anyway. <laughs> He throws that Molotov so that he can take a peek from Boiler's side to make it safe so that if people try to frag who are close, they, they don't want to run, run through the Molotov. So it's actually like this super smart play that he makes. Um, well, we ha we'll see CLG actually moving up mid, going for those picks. Oh, I think nothing spotted the barrel of the gun there, and he's going to be led into a frag onto JDM64. He was not ready for that. And nothing, he's been on point and he continues the trend. They are four rounds behind now, our Cloud9. They have been doing, they've been fighting like absolute champions here. Like Spartans. The odds against them, but they have been uh, 
keeping their composure. Nice smoke to watch there from CLG as they execute in, looking for the wrap. Here comes Skadoodle though, picks up the defensive kill onto Tarek. And now Cloud9 looking strong, just playing around the smokes like absolute monsters. And CLG can't seem to find a way in. It's such a different story right now. Skadoodle goes for the wallbang, he's gonna get it. And uh, I guess you can see the, the, uh, the muzzle flash of the gun there to allow him to know where the wallbang would be. A great uh, 3k there from nothing as well. He is on fire. 20 frags. He is the only player positive for his team by quite a way, actually, at the moment. Yeah, they had a really rough start, Cloud9. Mm -hmm. And another eco here for CLG. Once again, this is a spot where Cloud9 is starting to build that bank. Oh, quick frag here. Freakazoid, that's really smart. Goes for a quick frag, falls back, wants to make it a little less bad that he just they just lost a teammate uh, so quickly. And uh, we do have nothing to support now. 2-2 two -two here for them, but he's going to pick up a frag. Nothing connecting today on Inferno. And that is when Cloud9 are dangerous. Yeah, it's a really awkward position for Cloud9 since they don't have control of Banana. Even though they're in a 4v3, you can't really like play both sides with only two people. And they're opting to go for two people on B, which means it's a big risk if they would go A now, which there are. Like, if CLG gets on, like, clean enter frag, they have an opening in this round. And here it is, though. If the incendiary, there's that flick. Tarek is going to take down Shroud, leaving Sean Gares on the bomb side alone. But he's going to go for the jewels right now. He does pick up a quick frag, and he falls back a little bit. If he can keep the delay going, great incendiary to help that effort, then his teammates will be on these CLG players before they know it. And indeed, that will be the situation. Tarek with the AWP trying to spot into Sean Gares, and that is a beautiful little... A shoulder peek there with the jump from Sean Gares to uh, force the whiff of the AWP from Tarek. And that was the moment to strike. 12 to 10, and Cloud9 look like they've got a level of momentum. A great mechanics That's there from really Sean Gares. Yeah. Like positioning himself well, dodging. He didn't lose a single HP there. And he killed like three people with Tech 9s, so really impressive stuff. Yeah, with the rifle where you have to stop at some point, versus Tech 9s where you don't have to stop and you run faster anyway. So, <laughs> so just to give you idea there, but we're going to get a peek from Skadoodle and that, th this, this could be where things start to go downhill for, for Cloud9 if they're not careful because Skadoodle taking the aggressive play, now it's in a spot where the standard plays have been working for them, exactly. so, you, so you have to wonder what, uh, it's, it's, you might get too confident when you win that many rounds in a row and you look at your economy like, oh I have 10,000, I'm just going to take a peek, right, and right. it's like, it's, as you said, it's their like might be the beginning of the end because like you might be starting to get too cocky. It's one of those plays where if the T's expect it, if they're just sitting there waiting for you early in the round, then they'll probably frag you. It's it's quite likely to see it's the surprise that makes that work. Now we have a smoke off isolating Freakazoid away from having a crossfire with a teammate. And this this is the start of how you force the T CTs back because once that crossfire is eliminated between the quad and arch player then they generally tend to fall back, most, most CT sides. You rarely see a CT guy just stick his neck out there with no support. And that's what's happened. So now they've claimed with the grenades middle, and CLG have the opportunity to double back. However, no one's on Banana, so they might not favor that as they don't have any eyes. That's what's happening down there, but... With the pop flash, and this is such an important round after losing to Skadoodle for them to win, and oh, the pop flash into the double spray down from Freakazoid is definitely going to help matters out. JDM gets the return as Freakazoid goes for a repeat to see what's going on, but it's it's okay. We have a one on three for CLG, no time at all. So Cloud9 will feel confident in this and will pick up the frag. So they have made the comeback real, it seems. 11 now to 12. They have won so many rounds in a row. Yeah, just look at that. And they lost the pistol round as well. Yeah, Th yeah. Those four kills by Freakasoid on with that P250 was so crucial for their comeback. Yeah. Definitely, we've seen a lot of uh, a lot of stuff today that c is definitely going to make it into some highlight clips. To be honest, lots of frag movie material here from all these North American teams and the HTC Reborn Invitational. If you are just joining us. This is the second best of three have today. Second semi-final winner of this match will place themselves up against Team Liquid in the grand final. Team Liquid who did defeat Affinity 2-0 just, just previous to this. 
And Affinity put up a hell of a fight, but today it was not good enough. TOG now, like once again with another mid take. And Cloud9 once again just relying on the good defensive setups and allowing themselves to be pushed back there, forcing the nades out of, of COG. COG have to expend these nades to get them to play further back. Yeah, and COG has found absolutely no success with going for those A splits. Let's see if they try to go for a B split now, maybe. Oh yeah, indeed, they are going to go for it, but Skidule, there is the flick of the wrist from Skidule. Takes down Finesse, and looking at more damage with that AWP, but in comes Haze. Oh, they don't spot him. Goes for the spray down. Nothing for the refrag, though. Perfectly positioned to help out, and it's going to be a three on four for the C for the T's here as they move into that deep bomb site, looking for the wrap. Only one player on Banana, but that incendiary is going to cause quite a bit of damage. Sean Gare's going to get a bit of spray down. Go through the smoke. Oh, he's going to completely destroy Cutler, and he finishes off the round with the third kill. Great stuff there from the in-game leader. Sean Gares is going to hold down B, and Cloud9, 12 now to 12 against CLG from a a position of complete despair where nothing was working. They have found a lot yeah, it of was frags, a lot of great defenses. CLG was up 11 to 1, and Cloud9 lost the second pistol round. So, yeah, just, yeah, to, just exactly. to, re to reframe this, just to get the perspective back here of, the, of this situation, and another eco from CLG. Yeah, so Cloud9 probably gonna get. Or take the lead now. Actually, this is, this is not a force up, is it? It can't be, surely. No, no, no. It is buying no, no, within no, no. Yeah, exactly. Okay. They're in the position where you can. If, if you lose all the time, you get a tech, ar tech armor buy, then an AK armor buy, then a tech armor buy, then an AK armor buy, just back and forth. And once again, we're going to have a really just, again, just good play on both bomb sites. Cloud9 using the bread and butter of, of Inferno to do great effect. And it is uh, definitely looking good for them. They've got a four and two in this round again, so they're looking like they might take the take the lead for the first time in this this match. Into the 25th round, they have found themselves the lead. Finally, 13 to 12 by Cloud9, and you've got to respect the comeback. It's been a really exciting match so far, and nothing. He was fragging a lot through both sides, keeping his team. In it. I'm not sure, I'm, I would love to hear the comms as well, like just a general uh, feeling on the comms, because when you have a, co a comeback of this magnitude, everyone is waking up when they need to wake up. Yeah, we um, see some great stuff from both uh, Freakasoid and Sean Garris as well. Rather than some of those moments as well, but because we're going to go in here deep behind those grenades, oh, and they're going to line up for him as well. He gets a triple kill, and it's just finesse left, and there is only 20 seconds, of, less than 20 seconds of the round gone, and four players. Five players on the on the server are dead. I like how CLG is thinking there, though. They, okay, nothing is working. We can't do our A executes. Let's just try to take banana fast and quick and uh, play the trade game. Yeah, exactly. Unfortunately, Cloud Nine did some proper nades, pushing out like stuff like that can happen. Yeah, it's, it's such it's such good A defenses. Really, you gotta gotta credit them that. And this is something as well that. Uh, I think usually that the ethos against teams that you perceive as not necessarily like lesser to you all the time, but sometimes you feel like, okay, we're a better team. Let's start with very strong basics and see how they deal with that. Because we don't have, like for example, when Skidoo went for that balcony pick with the, with the AWP, that's not basics, that's taking a risk when if the basics are going to do it anyway, you got to test that out first. And of course we saw that that was working for them. And since he did that, we, we, we've seen that maybe he's been reined in and they're saying, hey guys, guys look, this is just working, what we're doing, just staying on our standard setups, they haven't broken it yet, let's yeah, just keep it going. That's a really good point. We can see a team's doing that mistake on Mirage as well, where they get to like an 8, 9, 0 lead as CT, and then they decide to push middle as CT, yeah. even though their basics is like completely yeah. crushing their opponent. Like, there's no point in doing that then. Stuff like that you need to do to like counter something. Yes, yeah, yeah. Which you're losing against. It, it makes more sense for on a T side to preemptively uh, try to attack the, the adaptation of the CTs because the T's yeah. get to condition the the CTs a little bit more. Exactly. There's more opportunity for them to do that, I guess, in, typically. But Cloud9, they're, they're close to maybe even closing this one out. We have CLG looking at a B play right now. They've got an abandoned apartments by Boiler. This is a very classic Lurk play. Guy who can create pressure, got, gonna show a grenade, gonna try to delay, and in comes the execute. CLG actually looking strong right now. They've got a good entry, great stuff. Finesse and Tarek with two fast kills. Nothing will take down the Lurker, but the bomb site will be the property of CLG. They're going to plant the CLG flag right there, bang on in the center of that fountain, and challenge Cloud9 to retake with that bomb ticking away. And with this 4 on 3, 
They should just go for the exits. That would be the nail in the coffin if they would do that. Has nothing going over the top here. Cutler going to take down Stroud in the effort. There's a second player in Dark. Oh, the oldest trick in the book here. They'll never expect Finesse to be there. And he's going to actually announce his presence and go for the spray down, but nothing. There's not much he can do in that spot as they are just too many with too many angles. And the round will be won by CLG. And that is the first time they found a round win in since the pistol, I think. Yeah, and yeah exactly. And uh, in that situation, if they go for the exits, they just block both Banana and uh, Seed Spawn, and they kill all the five play all five CLG players. They actually get less money than yeah. when they were. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. They would yeah. have like 3,300. Like and Navi is a team who abused that so much. They would have, I think, for sure have done that in this situation. And uh, it would have basically won them the game because they will buy Galils and like one smoke each. Then they lose that round and then their money is reset. Yeah, oh wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just so smart to do that in that situation. God damn. However, COG are backing it with a chance. However, they're not going for a B play with Cloud9 who did take Banana aggressively this round. So uh, they can go for the, this is one of those uh, those mind game things where if you go for the deep banana plays, do you keep two players there because they presume you've been keeping just one there and abusing the four man A setups, or and do we flash through the smoke and go for it, or what do we do? But it looks like that's not the case this round that dynamic because Cloud9 are playing a, a standard two three once again. They they are saying to CLG we're going to force you to use grenades to push us back as well. So they're not all the way back just yet, although it looks like they are slowly getting there. And uh, I think we're ready. For, I think they might be. Cloud9 may be going for a pop flash setup here. Yeah, there it is. Over the roof to spot for Sean Gares. He, they need some info right now. There is 40 seconds left. They need to know where COG are going. And there's the re smoke. The, and there's another smoke for Sean Gares. This is perfect for, for Cloud9 if he places this at the right time. Yeah, and only 25 seconds left now. They're going to have to go through it. They're committed through this. Now this this can be really interesting right now. Sean Gare's in a really good position. Freakazoid there for support as well. They got a third player. Cloud9 look set up to take this round. Great uh, kills across the board coming in from CLG there, though. They're gonna make it happen. It would seem nothing comes in with the spray down from CT spawn, but the bomb will go down. It's a two-on-two -two retake. And nothing. He's got oh that nade was painful. Down to 17. He's got Shroud coming in from Banana. And JDM64. They're playing the old good old Heat and Potty setup right now. And, oh, nothing. Such an important fast frag. Nate straight into the back here. And they are going to find the kill. Shroud with a headshot onto Cutler. And Cloud9 moving to game point. Yeah, and probably a really weak buy here from CLG. They did get the bomb down, so they might be able to afford like take nine nades, which we're probably going to see. Cutler can afford an AK, but the rest of his team, yeah, is going to just go for pistols. So. Cloud9 looking to win this game, 16-13. I liked the nades from uh, nothing there into dark because when you see the player at new boxes, when there's two of them left, the other guy is definitely playing in dark. Like, that is the most solid defensive setup you can yeah. have. Mortals can make it tricky though, but still, it is very good. So nice prediction there from Cloud9. As you say, they're looking to end it here against this kind of a buy. It's 15-13. My goodness, what a comeback. We've seen three-man set up towards squad as well here for Cloud9. They've got all the players ready to defend that side. They're giving up Arch, and that's really, really smart, actually, because even if the T's take Arch, what are they going to do with it at this point? They're going to go for T a CT spawn, still play at ranges. This is a smart setup from Cloud9, I've got to say. And uh, Skadoodle there with the AWP gets the flick onto Cutler, and they're down to three players now to make something happen, and they don't have a bomb site. And they don't really have much to work with either. They've only got a Tech 9, a Galil, and a, an AK-47. And time is beginning to be a bit of an issue for them as well. As Cloud9, they're actually rotating nothing towards B. They are predicting that CLG are just going to go for a B play. Well, he's, he's on the float here. So this is the kind of uh, the safest place he can be without uh, giving up information on Arch completely. So, ooh. Oh. Okay, he's going to keep the angle. Okay, he spots them and falls back. Smart stuff from nothing. Takes a good position. Calls it. They're running towards him. He's going to nail the first one. There's the trade, but nothing. I think he's done enough damage here. Freakazoid's going to go in. Time is beginning to be a problem right now, and the delay could happen right now. Freakazoid gets another frag. Another trade. JDM64 is left with 64 in the tank. Uh, sorry, 8, eight health in the, in the tank there. So it will be very difficult for him to survive this assault. And Sean Gares with a perfect... Perfect spot, and it's going to be 16 to 13. Wow, what an inferno from Cloud9. I can't believe that. After what we had at the start, I was just, I was just like, oh my god, they're going to get crushed. And yeah. And that retake, that was it like at 14, 13 to Cloud9? Nothing, yeah. uh, they run nothing through that yeah. HE to dark. 
Like if uh, CLJ won a one out round, I think Cloud9 would, was going to be forced to Nico. Yeah. And we could have actually seen like overtime with yeah. CLG actually winning. Yeah. It's so back and forth. Well, that's actually an awesome inferno. We've had. <laughs> okay, guys, that was super good. Uh, okay, we need to go to a break, guys. Need to take a breather. Again, I'm going to remind you of the awesome giveaway that HTV, HTC are providing. You can win an HTC One M9, or well, sorry, and you can win a, a PC provided by Cyber Power PC. If you go to bit.ly forward slash giveaway by HTC, as you can see on the lower third there. So. Go follow the instructions, get yourself an awesome giveaway, and uh, we are going to take a quick break. We have the next map coming up. It's going to be Train, which is Cloud9's choice. Feels like they're set up to win this from this point forward. Surely there's some knowledge here, but uh, we are going to take a break. We'll see you guys in a moment.